But what I'm saying is, Mike is the GOAT from his competitive greatness and his skill set. He's proven it. He's proven it. He's proven it. But what I'm saying to you guys is this. You got to start listening. You got to start making it a respectable argument because you're not doing it when you say. That's unfair. That's unfair. No, they're not. You you guys are. Coach J.O. just brought in a dunk contest. Since when does a <laughs> slam dunk competition make you the best basketball player in basketball? Let me welcome back to another episode of the Goat Debate. I am your host, Abaya Israel. The show is brought to you by Goat Debate Media, and I'm here with the two best coaches online, Coach Scott and Coach JO. We got a good one lined up for you tonight, right after this. Even though I killed the ghost, it's still room to debate. It's either Jordan or LeBron who being labeled the great. If you hungry for the smoke, then come and get you a plate. Cause some rock with LBJ and some giving them hay. Come tune into the show, cause we about to get into it. Jordan is the goat. But now it's time to prove it. All right, coaches, we back, man. Listen. All right, so did, let's just let me just jump into this real quick. The new school. These these guys who are running around talking about they done with the 90s. They done with the 80s. This silliness. Look like you was born in 2005. You don't know nothing about the 90s or nothing about the 80s. You know, I, but but yet they're done with the 90s. I'm like, on the TikTok, you know, I I, that, I put the uh, short up on the TikTok and one of the little youngins was said, ain't you heard, uh, we done with the 90s. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> I said, man, it's past your bedtime. Get off my TikTok. Right. So uh, but why are they saying they done with the 90s? Because they just really believe because of this new narrative that there's no good teams that that the 80s suck, the 90s suck. And now we got Draymond Green has surpassed Larry Bird and three pointers made. Coach Jay, I'm going to start with you. And now I'm scrolling down to YouTube. I'm watching YouTube and I see another young, young cat look like he was born in maybe 2001 like we done with the 90s look at draymond he's better than larry bird what you know these young kids they i don't think they understand uh um context and numbers and for all you guys out there watching we read the comments too when you keep saying these guys how old are these guys they're not old enough to even see jordan play listen man we we we, i ain't gonna give away my age you know what i mean but you know I'm in that 45, 6 ish, 44, 3 ish range. I, I give you that. I'm not the youngest guy. We ain't the oldest guys, but we ain't the youngest. And we're not these 2001 guys, J.O. Right. What's up? What are they talking about? Draymond Green better than Larry Bird. What in the heck is going on with this new generation, man? Listen, shout out to my brother, my blood brother, Lee Warren Gooden Jr. Why are we even having this conversation, man? Listen, like seriously, like Draymond Green, Draymond Green. Like, how is that even a narrative right now? Draymond Green being better than Larry Legend, Larry Bird. Just because he's made more threes than Larry Bird? Are you serious? But I blame you, Coach Scott. I blame you for all this, right? I blame you and people like yourself, Uh right? When we continue to put uh, role players like the Draymond Greens of the world on the same level as a Charles Barkley, as a Kevin Garnett, as a Kevin McHale, as a Giannis, as an AD, hey, this is what we get. You know, you hype up Draymond Green and make him to be this superstar, this super Hall of Fame, uh, superhero type figure. I blame you, Coach Scott, and I blame people like yourself. Coach Scott, I'm just going to let you jump back in and respond. <laughs> right. It, it's just ridiculous. I, I personally was just sitting here. I was agreeing with everything he had to say. I mean, Draymond being compared to Larry Legend, I think, you know, that's about the, the wisest thing he said all day today. Um, you know, just kind of piggybacking off of that. You know, I'm looking at, you know, Larry Legend's uh, full body of work. You know, 2014 and 6 is, 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 is definitely a far cry from 9-7 and 6. Uh, you know, I, I think that that's a bad, bad, bad comparison. Uh, I think that things have to be definitely put in its own context. When when Larry Legend was playing, the three ball was 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 as you call it, uh, Coach J.O., a, a circus shot, uh, uh, a or, shot. Or, uh, yeah, a gimmick shot, right? So I mean, Larry Bird got good at shooting a gimmick shot, and 
you know, at, at that point in time in the game, you know, he, he really didn't have to do it. He was fundamentally sound. He wasn't he wasn't super fast. He wasn't quick as lightning. But Larry Legend was a fundamentally sound basketball player. That's what made him so great. Even in the years where he slowed down with his back, I mean, he was just so fundamentally sound. He still was a formidable basketball player. But one thing I do want to do, uh, Coach J.O., is I definitely want to put some respect on Draymond's name now. I mean, he holds the same record. He holds the same award as, you know, one of your call so-called greats, Michael Jordan. In 2017, he did win the Defensive Player of the Year. I mean, he is a two-time All-NBA selection. He has eight defensive all-time selection. And he has four championships. So, I mean, I want to put some respect on his name, but in the comparison with Larry Legend, no, absolutely not. You don't, you don't, you don't do that. You got to put things in its proper context. And I think that this has just been removed out of its context. Right, right, well, right. So, 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 Coach Jay, I'm gonna give it to you. Like, um, Coach Scott made valuable points, <laughs> 2014 to six, in comparison to nine, seven, and five. Can we really do that? Now, also, yes, Draymond did pass Larry Bird in three-point shots, but he had to take an extra 311 shots to do so, right? It's not like you took the same amount of shots, and, and then we're, you're playing it in, in a different era, Coach totally J.O. It's a completely different era. They shoot more now. They shoot more. So, of course, he might, he's going to pass them eventually. And you're right, and that's the thing that uh, uh, the, a lot of fans don't understand, right? I have I have fans who tell me that Larry Bird cannot even be considered a great three point shooter because he didn't have enough attempts, right? And, I, and that's the way I look. I'm like, like, are you serious? Like, like, how is that even possible? Just because you got people chunking up shots doesn't mean that they can shoot. Like you said, he shot he got 311 more attempts than Larry Bird. So what? All right. <laughs> so what? Larry Bird shot a better percentage for him. He's about to shot a better percentage in the playoffs. Listen, there's literally nothing that Draymond can do as far as putting the ball in the basket better than Larry Bird, right? Now, Larry Bird's first season, I mean, his um, highest season in attempts was 200 and, well, we got 237, right? 237 attempts. That happened in 1987 and the 88 season. That would be 111 in today's game. 111. You want to? I'm gonna name some of these players who have got more attempts than uh, Larry Bird in his high season. Right. Nikhil Alexander Walker, Alex Caruso, Sam Merrill, Isaiah Joe, Dillion Brooks, Jordan Hawkins, Dennis Schroeder, Nas Reed, Corey Kispert. Who are these guys? Who are these guys? Uh, so just because they got more attempts than Larry Bird, <laughs> does that mean that they shoot better than Larry Bird? Come on. Like, it's it's this argument now Larry Bird doesn't qualify because he doesn't have enough attempts. Where where, where, where does this come from? Um, If, if you're asking me, it comes from the Le LeBron James supporters. I'm, really, <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I know Coach Sky, I get it. I'm going to be 100% honest, man, because I don't see nobody else trying their hardest to discredit the 80s, trying their hardest to discredit the 90s so that they can discredit Michael Jordan and say Michael Jordan had a competition, Larry Bird sucked, Magic Johnson, Johnson sucked. I, there's literally some guy, and I don't know his name, I didn't even care to even figure out who he was, but I saw a few of his videos and that's all he does is talk about how horrible the 80s were, how horrible the 90s were. Michael Jordan didn't have a left hand and he just goes in these rants, right? But the, here's the crazy part. The new generation, the younger generation, they all believe it. They're not seeing the games. They're not watching the games in the 80s. They're not watching the games in the 90s. And they believe this. So, I mean, so when you get to this Draymond Green, you know, who, who shoots 32% from downtown versus Larry Bird, who shoots 37.6, they're going to believe this. But yet, overall, look at, look at, listen, listen, three champions. Yes, Draymond Green has, Coach Scott, Draymond Green has, Four championships. True enough, Larry Bird has three championships. But in those three championships, he was the MVP in the finals of two of them, meaning he was right. the leader of his team. He was the guy. He wasn't the guy, you know, right, right. And I don't want to let me let me not say it that way because I don't want to disrespect Draymond's uh, his 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 career and his legacy. But oh, yeah. we have to be honest here. 
We got to be real. We talking about Larry Legend here and Draymond Green. All right, that's what we're talking about. We're in, 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 in a game where in a game where today's game is surrounded by the three point shot. Steph Curry attempts 12 threes a game. 12. That's a lot of threes. This is what the game is today. And Draymond at his highest, uh, uh at his highest, he was attempting 3.7 a game. You know, so with that being said, Larry didn't shoot that many threes. Not yeah. like we all, you know, think in compares comparisons to, to, to today's game. But I'm telling you, coach, it's 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 these it's these narratives. And I know you're a LeBron guy, but I'm just being honest. I think you're a logical LeBron guy. I just don't think a lot of these guys are logical. I'm not gonna be honest with you. They're saying some crazy stuff. But you you can correct me if I'm wrong. Hey, look, man, I, I, I don't speak for all, all LeBron fans. I don't speak for, for anyone but myself. But what I will say is anybody that's comparing Draymond Green to Larry Legend, stop it. Stop it. You, you're not making a wise uh, argument. You're not making a, a good argument. It's, it's a, it's, that's a pretty bad argument. I mean, Draymond Poor. is a cog to the, to, the, to the wheel that makes uh, – the Golden State Warriors move for sure. Right. He he has been an integral part in them winning four championships. But please understand, the three championships that Larry Legend has, you you better know and understand. He walked through the trenches with some well respected Hall of Famers on his team, and he put those guys on his back and he led them to championships and became the MVP out of three of those championships. And that stands on its own. Hey, listen, I'm going to run through these stats real quick, Jay, Coach Jay. I'm going to let you grab back in before we go to the next segment. But I'm, I'm going to run through these stats real quick. <clears throat> and let's just do a quick comparison for those of you who think Draymond Green is just as good or better than Larry Bird. That's, That's just – I can't wrap my brain around that one. But Draymond Green, percentage uh, – he shoots 32% for the career for his career from downtown. He has attempted 2,038 three-pointers, right, 300-plus more than Larry Bird. Making 600 at the time of this recording, he has now made 652 of those. He averaged double-digit scoring in four out of 12 seasons. His highest scoring season is 14 points per game. For, for his career, he's 8, 7, and 5 on 797 regular season games. He has four All-Stars, one Defensive Player of the Year, four NBA championships. I mean, it's good career. Good career. We're not knocking it, but this is what we're comparing it against. Larry Legend shot 37.6 from downtown. Only had to shoot 1,727 three-pointers. He made 649 of those. He averaged double-digit scoring through 13, 13 out of 13 seasons with 29.9, roughly, basically 30 points uh, per game being his highest scoring season. And he's 24-10 and six guy on 897 regular season games. 12 All-Star appearances, Rookie of the, of the Year, three-time MVP award winner, two-time M- a Finals MVP award winner with three championships. Need we say more, Coach J.L.? <laughs> Need we say more? Not, not to mention back-to-back-to-back to back to back MVPs, okay? Okay. Come on. Right? Come on. And, and this argument, right, what I hear is, is strictly about Oh, uh, Bird doesn't have enough attempts. He doesn't have enough attempts to even be considered a great three-point shooter. But every year from 1980 to 1988, every year except two seasons, he was in the top 10 in attempts. And one of those two seasons, he was number 11. So we could, uh, it would be fair to say, if he was playing today, he would be top 10 in attempts as well. Like, they did not shoot the three. Like, I mean, they didn't do it, okay? When he came into the league, when he was in college, he didn't have a three-point line. It was called long-range shooting. That's just what it was. Imagine growing up your entire life not having a three-point line. Then you got to figure it out. It's literally the three-point line in the early 80s is equivalent to shooting a logo shot today. Yeah, some people do it, but it's a gimmick shot. Right, and we can can see also – that you know, Larry Bird, he's he wasn't just a three-point shooter. He was he can score right. and he averaged 10 rebounds <laughs> and over six assists. So obviously he was an all-around player. All right. So we got to get away from this narrative. I mean, listen, new generation, we understand, you know, we understand what you're looking at. I'm not gonna pretend like I don't see what you see. I see what you see, but we gotta have context. You gotta put context to everything, and taking the context out ain't gonna change this goat debate, you know what I mean. But with that being said, we are going to go to the next segment. All right. 
And Coach Scott, I'm gonna start with you on this one. <laughs> I know you would. I knew you would. Listen, listen. You know, you my guy, man. We go way back. Uh, we played little league football together, and we we went to school together. You know, way back when. And I ain't know you was gonna grow up this way. I ain't know you was gonna be raised like I'm just playing. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Coach Scott, all seriousness, come on now. Why do LeBron fans hate Michael Jordan fans so much? What is it about them wanting to make LeBron the GOAT so bad that they're doing everything within their power to tarnish not only Michael Jordan, all right? They have now, as we just said in the last segment, they're going to the point of tar tarnishing the 80s and the 90s because if you can make his competition weak, well, guess what? Well, he he he's not a good player because he had no competition. If I can say Magic was 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 was, was uh, uh, washed up, Bird wasn't that good. The 80s was trash. Clyde Drexler, oh, he was a nobody. Well, guess what then? Well, Michael Jordan ain't played nobody. Of course he looked good. All right. Now, in comparison to LeBron James, you know, he played everybody. He played all these Hall of Famers, and so. They're going to the extent, Coach Scott, in order to pull Jordan down, they have to pull everything down around him. That's called hate, right? I hate you so much, I'm pulling everything else around you down. What's going on? I'm not saying you, but what's going on with these LeBron fans, man? This is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. Listen, I, I don't know what circles you guys kind of roll in. I don't know. I don't know what 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 your what your Facebook fans and Twitter fans and I, I don't I don't know the people y'all talk to man I don't see this and 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 Mike fans his minions y'all need to stop you you guys are you guys are look you stop it stop you you cannot blame everything on LeBron James I know it is it is a hard it's a hard pill to swallow that somebody else would dub themselves how dare somebody dub themselves the king of the court how dare somebody but listen here's what i i, I did some recon this week I, I really wanted to when we brought this up you know i was i was really intrigued by this conversation so i did some recon and i actually interviewed a good amount of people a good people a good bit of people who physically like lebron a great amount of people love Mike and 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 I and I kept saying the same thing with the Mike fans I'm like hey hey look I'm asking from a subjective standpoint I'm, I'm not telling you who I like or who I'm not I'm just asking the question and here's what I got from the LeBron fans versus what I got from the Mike fans Mike fans you don't listen you don't just you do not listen you have it already programmed in your head that Michael Jordan is the best and that's it. And that's fine. But if you're going to have a debate, if you're going to have a conversation, please just listen to someone else's point. The second thing, you always start the conversation with what LeBron James has not done. You cannot just state what the greatness of Michael Jordan is. That kills me. That kills me. The third thing, what both people don't say and what a lot of Mike fans do is they want it both ways. You want the stats when they're in Mike's favor, but you don't want the stats when it's not in Mike's favors. I know you need to get you some sleep early in the day. And then when you get on the show, you can have a lot of rest. No problem. Uh, look, I don't want to hear about Michael Jordan taking two years off no more. That's his business. He took them two years off. Well, if he would have played, if he should have played, if he could have played, what would have been what could have been we don't give a damn he didn't play leave it alone and let's move forward five listen you're not gonna change anyone's mind about who they like so just debate what your point is and move forward and stop acting like michael jordan did not play with other great players he led them he led them in a phenomenal way. He put them on his back at times, but he's not the only person on the court. He was not the only person on the court and he was not God. Mm. <sighs> okay, so- um, You need to get you some rest in the daytime. <laughs> I don't know if I got an answer to my question, Coach Jay. I wanna know why LeBron fans hate- I just told Michael you. So those much. are the five reasons right there. Oh, so those are the five reasons? Okay, all right, all right. Um, Michael Jordan fans are the a... new Dallas Cowboy fans. <laughs> I think it's I think not that you hate up... the Cowboys; you just hate their fans. Uh, uh, well, 
No, I could probably agree with that. But I think there's a little <laughs> bit of bias in seeing that response. Coach J.O., what's going on, man? I know we have the GOAT debate, and as the show is called The GOAT Debate, make sure you subscribe and hit that like button. So we have the GOAT debate. You got Mike Jordan, and you got LeBron James. It's okay. But it comes a point in time where the fanship gets ridiculous. Like, I, me personally, Coach J.O., Coach Scott, there are some LeBron fans I won't even debate. I just turn them off. I'm like, I'm not finna say and do this with you. When you start saying Magic Johnson wasn't a good player, when you say Larry Bird wasn't a good player, when you say Clyde Drexler was a bench warmer, like, listen, bro, when you say they play in a league full of plumbers, right? But guess what? LeBron James has to go to one of those plumbers to learn how to play down low, named Hakeem Olajuwon. That's the type of league Michael Jordan played in. He played in. He played with guys named Hakeem Olajuwon, and we can, the list just goes on and on. So when you start saying nonsense like that, guess what? If we on the phone, it goes click. If we online, it goes boop, block. I'm not even dealing with you because now you're just being ridiculous. Coach Hale, why is it to such an extreme that LeBron James fans just, just hate Michael Jordan fans? I don't I hate Michael Jordan, should I say? I just, I just don't get it. Oh, it's easy. He can't catch the ghost that he admitted to chasing. He admitted that he was chasing the ghost. He can't catch, he can't catch the ghost. That's Let me ask you a question, Coach Scott. I'm going to paint this picture of this player and tell me what kind of player or what kind of career this player will have. If I told you a player was an MVP, two-time finals MVP, nine-time scoring champ, four-time all-defense first team, three-time steel leader, two-time dunk uh, contest champion, and got his re uh, jersey retired by a team he didn't play for. Uh, what kind of career? You, would you say that person had, or stellar. that player? A stellar, stellar, player. A stellar, stellar right? You do realize LeBron James will have to do all of that, what I just stated, to catch Michael Jordan. No, he he would have to do all of that to catch Michael Jordan. He wouldn't. Do you understand that? You do. What, what year is Michael Jordan? I mean, what year is LeBron James playing in? Year 21? Yes, he is playing in year okay. 21. Is, do you not understand what I just said? He literally would have to do everything that I just stated to catch Michael Jordan. That's why LeBron James fans hate Michael Jordan because they cannot catch the ghost. The ghost is gone. You can't see him. You never will, okay? This isn't a fair fight. Let it go. Let it go, all right? I'm not, I'm not even a, a MJ fan. That's the point. I'm not. Okay? I rooted against MJ. The few, I mean, the games that I did watch him play live, I rooted against them. He was too good. He was too good. I wanted him to lose. But he didn't. I'm not an MJ fan. He's just too good. Okay? You cannot catch the ghost. It's over with. I, hey. Unbiased opinion right there. I wanted him to lose, but he did. All right, so Coach Coach Scott, let's 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 get into this a little bit. Let's just talk about it a little bit. We know this ain't the Tuesday nights where we do actually do the goat debates, but you know uh, we upload those on Wednesdays. But let's go ahead and jump into this a little bit because there's a reason. And I, I agree with Coach Jo. I know where well, I believe that the reason LeBron James fans hate Jordan fans so much because they know they can't catch the ghost, you know, and there are so many things. Now, what, what Coach J.O. just listed off was an entire Hall of Fame career, an entire Hall of Fame career. Now, I heard you say that he, LeBron James doesn't have to catch, do that to catch MJ. OK, fine. But we still it, it's fair to, to say there's still a Hall of Fame career that separates Jordan from LeBron. And that Hall of Fame career was completed in 13, some people gonna say 15, but that was completed in 13 seasons. And LeBron has played 21 seasons. So I'm gonna pass you the mic, but I got a question for you. <clears throat> Let's just be honest. Let's be honest. We're both businessmen. So here's my question. If businessman A made $50 million in five years, businessman B made $20 million in 15 years, which one would you consider the better businessman? Listen, listen, let's talk about 
No, I need I need basket. an answer to that question before you go. Let's I need talk clean. about basket. Let's talk. No, nope, that's basket. an example. Which one is the better businessman? What's 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 your what's your boxing question again? Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> what's your, what's your boxing question again? It's not a boxing question. It's a logical question because it makes sense in every aspect of life. Every other way, everybody say businessman a businessman a because he accomplished more in less time. Well, businessman less B business. did less and more and with more time. He still couldn't do what businessman A did. That makes sense in every aspect of life itself. Today in basketball, why? And and here's and here's what i just got done explaining there's so many different circumstances that plays into business as you know and as i know hey man let's we just got done talking about it we we literally just got done talking about these silly people talking about draymond green versus the larry bird's career we just got done talking about it yeah i literally spent a weekend interviewing people to try and understand this. I I spend a weekend going back and really trying to understand why fans that hey we love you fans. By the way, keep commenting, keep liking, keep subscribing. We love you. Hey, I'm trying to figure out why fans are coming for my head based off of the statements that I made about Michael Jordan. Hey, I like Michael Jordan. I like Michael Jordan. I'm a Michael Jordan fan. He's just not like God to me, he, he's not, he's not my, ba- he's, I didn't say Reggie Miller said it. He, he's, he was basketball Jesus. I, I didn't say, he. I, I don't agree with that personally, but I think he was a phenomenal player. Larry Bird. But hey, Larry Bird, the other great. Well, Larry Bird. But, but hey, look, here's what I'm saying. There's so many different circumstances that play into era. They don't even play the same position, guys. This, this is what, this is the bad part about the argument in some respects. The greatness of LeBron James, again, it doesn't come from him being the most elite competitor like Michael Jordan. That's what makes Mike my 1A. I continue to say this, but Mike fans don't listen. That's the first key to Michael Jordan fans. Y'all no, don't think, listen. I think, I think they just believe LeBron's just not the 1B. I think that's what it is. <laughs> I, they heard the one A. They just don't believe LeBron's the one B. But go ahead, finish your point. And, and, and that and that's and that's fine. If you don't believe that that LeBron James is a one B player that, of greatest of all time, not the greatest athlete that has ever played the game in any aspect in any respect of the basketball game, if you can't see where LeBron James has made himself a top five player of all time in any respect of the game, rebounds, blocks, steals, assists, in any aspect, scoring. If you don't see that, that's your problem. But what I'm saying is, Mike is the GOAT from his competitive greatness and his skill set. He's proven it, he's proven it, he's proven it. But what I'm saying to you guys is this, you gotta start listening. You gotta start making it a respectable argument because you're not doing it when you say- oh, wait. That's unfair, that's unfair. No, they're not, you, you guys are, they, they, Coach J.O. just brought in a dunk contest. Since when does a <laughs> slam dunk competition make you the best basketball player in basketball? Let me, let, let me, let, all right, I'm gonna, give, I'm gonna let Coach J.O. respond to that, but I want to put out that I do not believe that LeBron has messed up. I think that was a foolish statement made by Stephen A. Smith. I don't think LeBron messed up the, the dunk contest. All right. I seen LeBron James uh, high school dunk competition. We have to understand when it comes to that, LeBron is not a creative dunker. He's not one of them under the legs, behind the back, hit a front flip. He's a power dunker. All right. Remember, we have. We, I, will, I will give you this. We do have to remember the guy is a forward. He just plays point a lot. He's a forward though. He's a big guy. So I don't agree with that narrative that LeBron messed up the dunk contest. Um, but here's what I would say, and I'm, I'm gonna let Coach Coach Jo get in here. Now, when you said that, you know, Mike fans don't listen, and you know these other things that you just said, I think it's unfair because it's not Michael Jordan fans who are seeking to destroy errors <laughs> just to bring Michael Jordan down. That's not Jordan fans, okay? These are LeBron fans that's running with these narratives. It's not it's not Michael Jordan fans creating narratives that Scottie Pippen has to always, always guard the best players because Michael Jordan had no defense, by the way, which is which we kind of destroyed that narrative on the last show. 
So I you know, disagree, it's, though. It, it's go. It, there are some fanatic Michael Jordan fans. I'll be honest, but don't sit here and act like the LeBron fans are just the most logical people walking the planet. They are saying some crazy stuff out here. I I tell you what. Here here's what I here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. If Coach Jo can give me five points, five points without saying what LeBron James did not accomplish. That is why Michael Jordan is just so much better outside of a slam dunk competition and 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 and, and retired jerseys and all this other good stuff. If 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 he can if he can go into that, hey, I'll listen. Because prior to, he's never done it. He's never done it. He's done what the 50 other people that I actually spoke with this weekend have done. They go into everything LeBron James has not done. They go into the errors different. You could hand check. It was way more physical. It, they try to destroy this era of basketball from what I've personally heard. But hey, I, I, I don't know. Okay. I, I, all right. Fair. All right. Coach Ayo, it's on you. Oh, you want me to answer that question, Coach? He's a better offensive player. He's a better defensive player. He's a better cut clutch player. He's a better leader. And he's a better teammate. Simple a better as that. leader? Yes, he's a better leader. He's a better, a better leader. He, he He's a better leader. He's not a coach killer. How many coaches have, have LeBron James had in his career? You don't even know, right? You're, we, we don't even know. We can't even we can't even stop count. Are you are okay? you are you kidding me? Are, are you are you kidding me? The man no, has not. Michael Jordan has been coached by a Hall of Fame coach his whole career. How did he his become whole a career Hall of Fame coach? How did he become a Hall of Fame coach? Oh, OK, are you, exactly. Are you kidding me? What, where was he before Michael Jordan? So, where so was he, he after he, Michael Jordan. He, look, where was was where, where was he after Michael Jordan? Winning championships, yeah. winning championships. He did. He won the championship when uh, Jordan left. He he won when he went to L.A. Did he? No, 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 no. Jordan first retired. No, 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 no. Did he not win? You asked. Did he win the specific championship when Jordan left? Specific question you asked me was what did he do when Jordan left? Yes, on his first retirement, what did he do? All right. What did he do? Went to Eastern Conference Finals championship. Eastern Conference semifinal. Eastern Conference semifinal. Semifinal. He went to an Eastern Conference semifinal with with no Michael Jordan. Whoop de doo. <laughs> Whoop de doo. Whoop de doo. Right. Whoop de doo. Whoop de doo. Okay. Okay. Mr. Hall of Fame. After coach. after, after, after that after that he goes and wins multiple championships outside of Michael Jordan. No 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 no. He down. did it. Slow down. Slow 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 down. He did slow it. Slow down. You got to slow down. But did he, he not won, though? He won multiple championships. I told you earlier, Coach Jo, you do the most. Yeah, look, you are Slow going down. into politics. I'm, Slow I'm down. calling it. Hey, Slow down. Hey, I'm he calling. It. You're going into politics with the real one B, with the real one B. Okay, that's who he won multiple championships with. Kobe, the real one B. All right. All right. Let's not get this twisted. Well, so here's the thing. Let's go over a few statistics. I want to read a few things off. We do understand that Michael Jordan has won 11 championships, right? 11. Somebody looking at me like, 11 championships? I only remember six. Well, six in the NBA. Then you got two FIBA, right? You got two Olympic, and then you got one NCAA. Every time this man has been in the championship, he has won. Any championship, he has won. Not only that, <clears throat> when we look at, all right, look at the top, the all-time leading scorers. The top six, right, all-time leading scorers, every last one of them played at least 19 years in the NBA, except for one who got there in 13. Guess what his name is? It ain't LeBron James. Michael Jordan, right? So this is a man who didn't, he did what he did in a shorter period of time. That's not it. When we do the comparisons, because this is, see, this is why we, we had a conversation because there's a lot of things missing from the argument when it comes You're to the right. newer it generation. Is a lot that's missing. It is a lot that's missing. That's why when I, we take yeah. snapshots of their career mm -hmm. side by side at 25, at 30, at 35, you 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 see the lopsided in the lopsidedness in the numbers. We do get a chance to actually break that down. And I cannot wait till we get on Tuesday night's GOAT debate to really get into that and deep dive into the specifics of it. Again, okay. <clears throat> again, 
I'm not saying that Michael Jordan is not the greatest basketball player. No, wait, player. wait, 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 wait. We're not saying you're saying it. The question was, why does LeBron James fans hate Jordan, Jordan so much? And the reason is, like Coach I, I, uh, I, I, said, I think that he's that's chasing the ghost. I think that that's the narrative. Well, he, he's a, chasing a ghost that he cannot catch. And therefore, since he can't catch it, narratives are being created. They are being created. You know what? And on the, on the I next quote, I don't, baby, I don't we, think, the gold don't debate think. that we have about Michael Jordan and LeBron James, we definitely got to open the phone lines. We're just going to dedicate the entire show, phone lines open, and we're going to have that conversation. You know? Yeah. It, yeah. yeah. Me beating down, beating the LeBron fans down on Clubhouse ain't fun enough. We got to open up the phone lines, <laughs> <laughs> We got to open them up. But there is so much more to go into what's going on between Michael Jordan and, and, and LeBron James. But there is no no close. He's not a close second. And, and again, I know you say Michael Jordan is the 1A, but that's why everybody listening is like, what? No, nah, we don't think LeBron's 1B, except for LeBron fans. They're going to so say So he's that. not your 1B anymore? Now, don't take my words out of context. I was talking about the longevity. I give him that longevity argument. But as far as the greatest player, because remember, when we did our top five, LeBron wasn't in mine. <laughs> remember? Let's remember. Let's be accurate. Longevity, I, I respect. He, he's longevity, although there may be an asterisk there. We'll see. You know, but longevity, if that asterisk is, is erased, then by all means, he's the greatest player to play for that long of a period of time. But is he, but is he like the GOAT or the next two GOAT? No. No, no, we're not. We're not saying that. We're not saying that. Coach Dale, I'll give you a final word before we go to the Sound next like Scottie Pippen, huh? <laughs> Coach Dale. Sound man. like Scottie Pippen, man. Listen, 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 listen. No, bro. I was very I was very clear. I was very clear on what I said. I was very clear. I didn't flip flop. I still sound the same thing I said then. Very clear. Listen, right. listen, brother. As I told you before, this is the phony goat debate. All right. The the M MJ versus LeBron, that's the phony goat debate. It's phony, okay? It doesn't have any legs to stand on. None, okay? LeBron James has a Swiss cheese career. Too many holes in it, okay? Too many holes. And the more you you the more you climb up that tree trying to bark, bark at Jordan, the more holes get exposed. Right. Okay? You got to let it go. You got to let it go. Right, right. And and not only that, you know, we should be talking about Kobe Bryant in the GOAT debate. We should be talking. Hey, we should put Larry Bird in the GOAT debate. Magic Johnson should be. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. There's more players that should be in the GOAT debate. It literally shouldn't be Jordan versus LeBron. I don't think, you know, when, when Coach Joe says the phony GOAT debate, I understand where he's coming from. But with that being said, we're going to move to the next segment. All right. Victor Wimbiama versus LeBron James. Talking about the comparison in the first few years of you know, play or first year of play, man, it's, ooh, it's, it's looking, um, a little close there. All right. Coach, who did I start with last time? Coach Jay, it's on you. Is Wimby, is Wimby Yamba, is he, is he going to be the next face of the NBA? Because, you know, this young man is, I think, I think he's the real deal. You know, oh, I think he's the real deal. Of course he's the real deal. Right. And, um, you know, the LeBron James fans, right. They love stats, 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 stats. You know, you remember when LeBron James wore that short, that shirt after he got beat in the uh, 2011 finals and said, check my stats. That's the shirt that he wore, okay? Everybody loves stats, stats, stats. Until, it, until it's another player that has those stats, that trumps LeBron's stats. Then it's, oh, let's bring everything into context, right? <laughs> That's what yeah. it is. All right. Victor Wimbyum. 20.7 points per game, 10 rebounds per game, three assists per game, 1.3 steals per game, right? 3.4 blocks per game. Okay? That's number one in the NBA. He's, he's only playing 28 minutes. LeBron James played 39 minutes, 40 minutes a game his rookie year. Okay? Victor Wimbiyama is doing all of this in less time, okay? He's only shooting 16 times a game where LeBron James shot 19 times a game. Mr. Pass First Player that, that everybody say he is, I don't know how you average 19 shot attempts per game for your career 
and you're a pass first player. I just want to throw that out there, right? When you're the best player on your bum team, yes. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, uh, absolutely. Let, uh, okay, yeah. let me absolutely. Let, let me finish. Let me finish. He has a 22.9 per. That's number 14 in the NBA. All right, defensive rating of 107. That's number three in the entire NBA. Where Kawhi Leonard, where your boy, Mr. Draymond Green, who you claim is this um, all-world transcendent defender. Okay, Kawhi Leonard's playing. Uh, Giannis is playing. He's number three. All right, defensive win shares, 3.1. He's number 11. He's number two right now currently on the defensive player of the year ladder. It's not close. Okay? It's not close right now. So mm -hmm. let's love on these stats the same way that you love mm -hmm. on LeBron James stats. Can so I love Coach Scott, Coach Scott, let me ask you this. Um, here's what aggravates me, right? And I want you to, we're going to get to Victor Wimby and LeBron James in comparison, how they compare thus far, you know, in his career, how he's comparing to LeBron James thus far. Here's what gets me. We had a show where we talked about, you know, what the news of LeBron James, right? And we talked about what was going on. And there was a comment in the comment section, which we will be reading comments at the end of this show, about us as a panel uh, bringing down black people. All because... We, we talked about LeBron James, right? And what the news was with LeBron James. When we're talking about being ridiculous in your statements, when we're only talking about sports, I don't know how this relates to the community. We never said he was a bad husband. No one says he's a bad father, son, friend, community member. That never comes up, right? We're talking about sports. And I want to ask about right now, sports. It, it relates back to the last segment. All of this is kind of ridiculous, but I want you to bring it home and let everyone know. We're talking about sports. We only want to compare Wimby Yamba versus LeBron where they are now. This is public information, right? <laughs> public information that's out for the entire public to see. It's a public game. We watch it on TV. We go to the games. How are they? How do you look at Victor Wimby Yamba in comparison to LeBron James now? And it should not relate to you. It, the, the outside, everything outside of sports should not be, be in consideration right now. Just sports. How is he related in just sports? Absolutely. I mean, I mean, I think that the, the, the young man is, is doing a great job um, as a rookie. He's having a phenomenal rookie season. Um, I think what they're 55, 56 games in, something like that um, currently. Um, he's having a great season. But <clears throat> When we, when we talk about how I look at them in comparison, I don't. I think this is a ridiculous conversation. I, I think this is a real ridiculous conversation. Okay. You're talking about a 7'4 center with a 8-foot wingspan. The guy literally is 7 inches taller than LeBron James, <laughs> and he has a foot wider, six inches on the left, six inches on the right, wider wingspan. Do you know when you learn rise over run in school, do you understand that half, half of the homes in the United States of America have what they call a step stool? Step stools are 6.5 inches in average. This allows your children to step up when they're being potty trained and get to the, the, get to the pot. To use the restroom without hurting themselves. Most elderly people use this 6.5 inch step stool to raise above their normal height so they don't hurt themselves. This guy still got an extra 0.5 inches, uh, 0 0.5, where he can literally just be look down and look over people. This is a center being compared to a small forward. This mm. is the most ridiculous conversation I've ever ever heard but since we are at the stats since we are only going to keep it basketball let's look at the greatest rookies of all time in nba history starting from 10 akeem olajuwon uh 20 12 3 all played all 82 games in his first season hmm, let's see if me uh, uh we uh, uh wimby 
actually makes that. Number nine, LeBron James, 21, six, six, two steals, played 30, like you said, 30 plus nine, 39 plus minutes per game uh, throughout his rookie season. Tim Duncan, 21, 12 and three, a better comparison because they're playing for the same team. They're playing for the same organization, but no, everybody wants to compare him to LeBron James. AI, 24 and eight. Bird, 21, 10 and five. 32 game wins over the previous year when he came in the league as a rookie. This is something that's formidable. David Robinson, this is a guy that actually plays for the same organization. Another person you can compare him to. Uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, 29 and 15. Michael Jordan, 28. We already know his stats, so we don't even need to go there, right? Uh, Wilt Chamberlain, 38 <laughs> and 27. Big O, the big O, 31, 10, and 10. Let's compare this guy to people that played the position that he played and what they did in their rookie season. You know why we don't do that? Because there's a narrative that some people across the aisle, I don't want to say nobody's name, but it's another narrative being created that other people just don't like to talk about. But Coach JL, how was those stats for you? Hold on real quick. Hold on real quick. Coach Scott, does LeBron James and Michael Jordan play the same position? Absolutely not. So, Coach J.O., why is it now that they have to play the same position? No, When I we have said that. several times no, that I LeBron that. should not even be compared to Michael Jordan. No, He should I probably be that. more compared to a Scottie Pippen or a Larry Bird or, you know, that style of play player, but not Michael Jordan. He's, it's not a comparison. And this has been said for a long time, but no one ever listens to that. But now when we talk about no, Victor Wimbiyama in comparison no, to Le LeBron James, no. Coach J.O. And I'm going to bring it back to you, Coach Scott. Let's respond. Let me get Coach J.O. Right. Right. Now we see that he shouldn't even be compared, but we've been comparing LeBron James a forward to a shooting guard for 21 years. Coach J.O., help us out. <laughs> okay, you, we know Coach Scott like to talk out both sides of his mouth, right? We get it, right? Okay. <laughs> Let's think about this. Over the last 10 years in the NBA, it's been this player, right, that won four championships, back-to-back -back MVPs. He got a final MVP uh, scoring champ. The best player of this era, Mr. Stephen Wardell Curry. He's 6'3". LeBron James, 6'9". Oh, why, why, do, why, why we don't use that argument then, Coach Scott? Have you ever heard me compare Stephen Curry? No, no, slow down, slow down. Have no, you no, no, no. ever no, no. heard me compare no. Steph Curry to LeBron James? Slow down, slow down, slow down. No. No, 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 no. Slow down, slow no. down, slow down, slow down. Put that collar up slow, so you can down. talk out the other side of your neck. So, so, so slow down, slow down, slow Come down, now. right? Slow down. Listen. When it comes to Stephen Curry, we don't use that he's a small guy. In comparison to LeBron James, you just say LeBron James is better. I'm talking about the LeBron James fan. You just say he's better. Simple as that. You don't you don't give Stephen Curry the small guy excuse. You don't do that. So we're not gonna do that right now. Okay, we're not gonna do that with LeBron. He doesn't get that. All right. Yeah, but let me you're, ask you this question. You're, right? you're, you're, you're right. You're let, right. Let me ask you this question. You're right. right. Uh Nikola Jokic, how good is he? We don't care. We're talking about LeBron James. No, 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 I, I, no, 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 no. Let's get back I, to the conversation you a question. at hand. Since this you is about have it, Wimby. Let's have it. This is about no, Wimby. Let's get back to the conversation at hand. Let's get this back is to about the Wimby. We're talking about scoring points per game. Uh, Wimby is at twenty point nine per game or twenty one points. LeBron James is at twenty point four, twenty points a game. Uh, rebounds. He's at ten. LeBron James is at six. Uh, assists. LeBron James blows him out of the water. He's at. He's at what? Six per game, assist is at three. Uh, blocks, he blows LeBron James out of the water. He has 3.4 per game, three, three blocks per game. Steals, LeBron James has two per game, Wimby has one. Uh, field goal percentage, Wimby is shooting a, a better field goal percentage and through 55 games. So what else you wanna talk about? Okay, again, slow down, slow down, slow down, my brother. LeBron James played 39 minutes per game his rookie year. All right, Wimby, tw Wimby, twenty-eight. Right, <clears throat> Nikola Jokic. Is he a good player? 
Why are we not talking about women and LeBron James? I'm just that's, asking that's, a question. That's the, that, that's the I'm, conversation. I'm asking a question. Coach Scott, Coach Scott, answer his question. Like he's, is Nikola he, he has Jokic right to a good question player? To his point. Is, is he a good player? Nikola Jokic is a good player. He's he's not just good. He's all time great. Nikola Jokic is a 26. Pose the question as you pose it. Hey, listen, Nikola Jokic is a 26 and 12 player. Okay. If Victor Rimbiyama was playing 36 minutes per game, his per 36 numbers would be 26 and 13. Okay. We're talking about the MVP of the listen. NBA. Slow down. Listen. I know you want to no, talk. No, no, no. Stop. 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 Coach Scott, let him finish. Let him finish. You got to slow down, okay? Because per 36 doesn't matter. Wimby didn't even play the minutes that LeBron playing, and he putting up more production. He's, his output is, is producing more than LeBron James did in less time on the court. That's just a fact. And if he got those minutes that LeBron James were getting, he would be putting up MVP numbers. That's what would happen. He would be putting up MVP numbers along with being a Defensive Player of the Year candidate. He's a literal Defensive Player of the Year candidate. He's number two right now on the ladder and possibly will win it. Hmm, interesting. Coach Scott? Can I ask you one question? Just one question. I, I, you know, I don't want to I don't want to beat a dead horse. Just one question. Go ahead. Why is he not getting those minutes? Uh, he's on a bad team. He's young. Uh, he's he's a big guy. So they're trying to um, protect them from injuries. Anything else? Okay. Anything else? No. No. If you want me to go and talk about LeBron team, no, with, no, and the players no. he had, LeBron James no, no, had no, no all stars on his team. No other question. Year. LeBron no other James no, had no, all stars no. on his hey, team. His hey, rookie year, hey, he had all stars. Hey. No, he had no players averaging no a double double question. on his team. Oh, yeah, okay. he had he had he had four people that he had four people that actually didn't even like him. Okay. Didn't hey, want cool. him on the team. He had all stars on his team though. He had all star. Okay. Hey. Hey. Thank you for answering that question for me, though. Hey. All right. Well, here's what we're going to do. <laughs> we're going to get ready to go to the next sec uh, segment. As we see, when we talk about LeBron James, <laughs> something turns up in Coach Scott. <laughs> it just goes a whole different way. So we're going to turn it down a little bit. All right. And we're going to switch gears here. Mike Tyson. All right. We've heard the news already. He's fighting Jake Paul. Um, I got to ask the question, Coach Scott. Is he helping to destroy the legacy of boxing by lowering himself? And I don't want to disrespect Jake Paul. He's doing wonderful things. But we got to be honest. Jake Paul's a YouTuber, right? I'm a YouTuber. I have another platform. We, the People University, and we have over going towards 600,000 subscribers, over 200 million views. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't. We, the People University. So I'm a YouTuber with big numbers. Can I fight Mike Tyson for a million bucks? Of course not. Of course not. But is he lowering himself? Mike Tyson has fought in 58 fights. He won 50 of them, 44 by knockout with only six losses. Coach Scott, we understand Jake Paul's. He's, hey, shout out Jake Paul. No knock against Jake Paul. But should Mike Tyson be getting in here? He's going to be like 59 when he makes this fight. And when he's fighting, there's a chance he could get knocked out. And nobody's going to remember he was 59 years old. They're only, only going to say Jake Paul knocked out Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson can be 103. And if Jake Paul knocks Mike Tyson out, guess what everybody's going to say? Jake Paul knocked out Mike Tyson. Coach Scott, what, what's going on with this? Why is this? Why is he doing it? This one, this one, I, I, I don't understand about you. This, this is, uh, this is concerning because, you know, the boxing commission shouldn't even approve anything like this. This is, this, you know, Mike is, is, I is think it's more dead. of a celebrity thing though. Like, so they don't. Yeah. I mean, when you look at Jake, Jake Paul fought Nate Robinson. I mean, he, he, he knocked out Nate Robinson. Like, I don't understand why Mike in his greatness, why he would, he, he is lowering himself. He He's lowering himself because Jake Paul doesn't, he doesn't respect the craft. He doesn't have that craft in his DNA, because if he did, he would have been a boxer and not a YouTuber. Um, that's just my opinion. No but, thanks. you know, I, I I just I don't understand why Mike is, uh, you know, putting himself in a position to, to, to fight uh, anyone, at, 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 for that matter, um, at 59 years old. I mean, hey, man, you know, there's there's other things that we can do to to to, to show our, 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 our physical prowess. And, you know, I, I, boxing at well past your prime and 
and things of that nature. It's a, it's it, in business. We talked about this earlier. You know, we're business guys. You know, there's risk reward in everything you do in life. And this right here, this is this is low risk, low reward. Mike Tyson wins. Nobody cares. You you knocked out a YouTuber. Who cares, right? Right. Uh, but but he loses. Mike Tyson got knocked out by a YouTuber, and and it never goes away. Never. It never goes away. You're you're no longer Iron Mike. You're you know Teflon Mike. You you Mike that got knocked out by the YouTube guy. So I I, I think that this is just a lose lose on both ends. I don't understand it, and you know, I mean I I don't this this one right here this baffles me. Yeah, Coach Jo. I mean, what's your thoughts, man? If 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 Mike get in that ring, he lose that fight. He could be a hundred and three, like I said. No one's going to care because you, that's not what you remember Mike for. You remember Mike, even though he lost six fights. Okay, we get it. You know, and a couple of them, he was kind of like, oh, I don't love the sport anymore. Kind of walked away from it. But you still remember Mike as Mike. But if he gets in that ring and gets knocked out by Jake Paul, you know, who only has a nine and one boxing record versus, I guess, YouTubers and other athletes, MMA and retired athletes, whatever. He, this is going to look bad on Mike, Coach Dale. It's going to look real bad. Coach Scott, this is not low risk. Okay? This is not low risk at all. Jake Paul can fight. He can fight. All right? So this is not low risk. The reward may not be high, but this is not low risk. I think that's what he okay? meant as far as, like, you know, Jake Paul. He can't box a little bit, but he, if this happens, he gets knocked out. I, right, right. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, yeah, no, I, no, no, that's that's what I meant. I, 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 I um, you know, if, if you misunderstood me, I apologize for that. Um, but yeah, I, I I understand what you're saying, but go ahead. No, Jake Paul can go, okay? His last two fights was against professional boxers. Neither one of them got out of the first round. Yes, Ryan Brolin, Andre August are professional fighters. They did not get out of the first round. But they, hey, listen, hey, a professional is a professional. Hey, it is what it is. A professional is a professional. Just no, like any, no, uh, wait, 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 I don't wait, care if you wait. play in Greece. We, no, I, I got to call you on this. Zimbabwe. Coach, I got to call you on this. You hey, just went up? over a list and named some professional basketball players and to say, who are these guys? Because your point was, they're not up there. They're not real. So oh, now man. all of a sudden, a professional is a professional. No. All right, Coach Scott, he might be going out the side of oh, over oh, <laughs> oh, I don't oh, know if oh. I can agree with that with Coach J.L. Okay, listen. Hey, Jake, Jake Paul is proven. He can fight, right? I, I give it to him, but he's a he, he can he can fight. Let, let's read this quote, right? Let me read this quote. My sights are set on becoming a world champion. And now I have the chance to prove myself against the greatest heavyweight champion ever. The baddest man on the planet. The most dangerous boxer of all time. This will be the fight of a lifetime. That's horrible. Okay. Oh, oh. Why is it? You know what this reminds me of? That's horrible. A gimmick, you know, a bad you know what gimmick. this reminds me of? You know what this reminds me of to all my wrestling friends? WrestleMania 24. <laughs> Ric Flair versus Shawn Michaels. Ric Flair last dance. Okay. <clears throat> hey, Sean, uh, Ric Flair was Shawn Michaels' childhood idol. That's who he modeled his wrestling style off after the great Ric Flair. He loved him. Okay. And he sent Ric Flair home, devastated with the sweet chin music. Hey, I love you, Rick. And he hit him with the sweet chin music and it was over with, okay? This might be one of those things. Jake Paul and his childhood idol, Mike Tyson, and he might send Mike Tyson home for his last ride. It is coach, what it is. It is on, what it is. Let me tell you the difference between the WWE and, and this, what we talk about. <laughs> what is it? It's a script, okay? Now I'm not gonna say it's fake because you got to take them bumps and bruises. I know you. You got to get in there and they get it in. But we, you know who's going to win before the match is over. All right. So when I say this is horrible, oh, I, 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 if I win, I'm, I'll have beaten the, the greatest. Of, listen, no, no, you would not have. You would have beat, beating, you, have, you would have won against a 59-year-old senior citizen. <laughs> That's what you have. But this you're going to wait, old. but wait, but wait, but wait, you're going to beat a senior citizen. Or, or AARP member, right? But, but, but 
you're going to take the credit as if you beat the baddest man on the planet. The baddest man on the planet has not been the baddest man on the planet for like 20 years. So we can't right. know. That's horrible. That's no, horrible. No, 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 That's no, horrible. no, 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 This is, listen, it takes courage to get into a ring with Mike Tyson. I don't I, care how old he is. Yeah, this is it. the baddest man, right? Okay. Now, do you all not think for the younger generation, we were just talking about Michael Jordan. How many of these guys really know Michael Jordan? This gives the chance for the younger generation to really see Mike. They get a chance to see. No, no, no. It, it, listen, this may not be the prime Mike, but they get to see Mike. They get to see him in, <laughs> in the ring. They get to see Co him. Coach Dale. Coach Dale. Listen. I, listen, bro, listen, brother. Listen. No. I, I understand it was a period in time where we had the three Mikes. Who they called the greatest. Yeah, Mike Tyson, Michael Jackson, and Michael yeah. Jordan. I get it. But even the greatest performer of all time, Michael Jackson, may, may, may he rest. He called it the last dance. What are you talking about, man? <laughs> oh, listen, listen. At the end of the day, Mike <sighs> trained. He helped train Francis Agano against his Tyson Fury fight. He helped do that, right? He helped do that. He can do it. It's not like Mike just going to get in the ring and, and, and be a nobody. He's going right. to get in there. He's so, a warrior. So He's going to fight. Coach J.O., let me ask you a question. Now, we know Mike was quick. He was fast. He power punch, oh, all that. Goodness. Is Mike as quick as he used to be? No. Does he hit as hard as he used to? Probably not. Probably not. Is he as fast as he used to be? No. Is he as a, a good a bosser as he used to be? No. Why not? Because he's older. Because they're going to keep on right there. This is an old man. But, but no, 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 no. No, <laughs> Fighting no, 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 no. Come on, hey, man. You're you at the top of the you pinnacle. Just, you when you're at the top, dismantled. when you're on Mount, Mount Rushmore, <laughs> when you're on Mount Rushmore and you go down a few levels, okay, those few levels is somebody else Mount Rushmore, okay? That would be our Mount Rushmore right now. To get so, in the ring with Mike Tyson, the average Joe can't do it. The average Joe would not get in the ring with Mike Tyson. Let me right let now. me let me let me say something what Lennox Lewis said, Coach Scott, on the Joe Rogan show when he was talking about fighting Mike Tyson. Yes, he won that fight. He won that fight convincingly. <clears throat> but Lennox was he said, and shout out to Lennox Lewis, man. He said it too. He said, "I'm the last great heavyweight." And when he said it, I was like, "This dude tripping," because I ain't like Lennox Lewis. I thought he was arrogant. But mm. when I really paid attention to Lennox Lewis. He wasn't lying. He was the last great heavyweight, one of the greatest to ever do it. But he said something on the Joe Rogan show. He said, yeah, I beat Mike, but I didn't get the same Mike Tyson that y'all know. I didn't beat the same Mike Tyson that y'all know. And the reason and I didn't beat that same Mike, because when Mike was in prison, I was still training. Mm. I was still able to train like it. And so when Mike came out, Mike wasn't that same Mike. And we could see, you know, Mike wasn't that same Mike. So even way back then, he wasn't the same Mike. But he was still able to hold his own. Now, at that point, I could say maybe a couple steps down. But at this point, he's going to be 50, 58, 59 years old. And he's been getting a fight of a young bull like uh, Jake Paul. Yeah, he's a YouTuber, but Jake Paul's a young, young, young bull and he's ready to box. And yes, he's trying to build his boxing career. True enough. But I think Mike Tyson getting in the ring, taking that chance is going to dismantle his legacy because do I think he can beat Jay Paul? There's a possibility. Do I think Jay Paul can beat him? There's also a possibility. I'm not saying it because I don't think Jay Paul can't beat him. I'm saying it because Jay Paul is going to be the old person, but take credit for beating the, to, the prime Mike. That's what's going to happen. Right. It was, was Michael Jordan. What was he when he was with the wizards? Was he, was he a shell of himself? He was a basketball player. That's what we're talking He was a basketball player. Oh, no, player. no, no. Was he a shell of himself? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. Was he a shell of himself? I, I, yes. I, think, I, think, I think, Abaya, you just, you hit the nail on the head. Michael Jordan was a basketball player. He was not Air Mike. He was, was not. He your, a shell he of himself? not your airness. And was he a shell that, of himself? Was he a shell of himself? Um, he was still a good player. He was still a, he was still an all star player. He was still a good player. He was an all star level player. At the end of the day, he was an all star level player, and that wasn't close to being uh, Mike. 
and he was still an all-star level player dropping some 40 uh point games. It is what it is. Boy. boy. And he still was that good. He, he dropped, still he dropped, he dropped that one forty foot game at 40. But Coach Scott, correct me if I'm wrong. Now I ain't the I ain't a mathematician. But 59 <laughs> minus 40 is 19 different years, right? That's <laughs> a, a big gap. <laughs> We talking about a forty year old Michael Jordan in basketball, which is not a brute, uh, not a, a a contact sport like that, like boxing, and we're comparing that to a fifty nine year old Mike Tyson, who's going to go in there blow for blow. No, it's, it's not, oranges, the it's I, not the that's, same. That's that's not even apples and oranges. That's 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 oranges and Jupiter. <laughs> it's just completely different, man. It's completely different. It's I don't know so what Jake Jake Paul laying people out, man. Jake Paul laying people, laying well, people that's out. That's the point. That's he the point. We don't want Mike Tyson to, to mess up his legacy because it's a chance that Jake Paul could lay him out. I mean, Jake Paul's a YouTuber, and he's going to fight a YouTuber who actually could probably lay him out, and that's nobody's going to remember all-time Mike at that point. They're going to remember Mike got beat by the YouTuber. Let's get ready to switch gears, man. We're going to go to the next segment. In the next segment, we want to talk about, man. Hey, listen, so I'm going to start with you, Coach Jay. I forgot who I started with last season, but Coach Jay, I'm going to start with you. Uh, Shannon Sharp. I've been saying this. I, I retweeted. I retweeted. You know, he put his thing got talking about the haters. And I'm like, come on, man. Man, the haters are what's getting you paid. And I know I know you know that because you said it. But why? But, but, let it go. They going to talk. They going to talk. Even when we look down in our comment section, this is a new channel. All right. New podcast. We have other platforms that, you know, that are doing very well. But, you know, this is a newer a platform. And now even when we look down there, we seen it. Y'all seen it. Y'all seen them comments, man. People going to talk no matter what. It's nothing you can say to please everybody. It's nothing you can do to please everybody. You know what I mean? Sometimes people going to say some stuff. The Internet is undefeated. <laughs> the Internet is undefeated. And sometimes, hey, I just, it's me, people talk about me and say stuff. I, I laugh. I've read some of the comments about myself before. And if it's funny, it's funny. I just read it. And like, whatever. But uh, let it go, man. Like, they going to talk. Don't come down. Like, just with Mike Tyson, Coach Scott, uh, don't come down to their level. Don't come down to their level. We saying the same thing about Mike. Uh, you getting, you get, you getting checks bigger than what you got in the NFL. The hell with what they got to say. Uh, when, Coach Yo, why is Unk uh, continue to respond to these haters? Hey, listen, he been listening to uh, his sister Libby uh, lately. Shout out to sister Libby, right? Sister Libby told him, could you do this if you had more haters than supporters? That's something to think about. Mm. And that's something that, that Shannon had to realize. And he said he did realize. It. His sister told him, could you do this if you had more haters than supporters? Letting them know there's more supporters than he got haters. Mm -hmm. Okay? Think about it. Uh, Shannon Sharp has two podcasts. Two. This brother's working. Not only that, and he's doing uh, ESPN First Take as well. This brother is putting in work. All right? And according to him, they are both top five podcasts on Apple and Spotify most of the time. He's putting in work. So somebody's supporting him. Yeah, right. Somebody is supporting him. OK, yeah. and those are the people that we should be focused on. Right. And that's not that's a lesson not only to Shannon, but the, a lesson to anybody that's trying to do something, that's trying to build something. We need to focus on the people that support us instead of the people that's, quote unquote, hating on us. Why are we giving those people attention? Right. OK, why? Facts. facts. Coach Scott, you know, that, that's facts. You know, focus on those who support. But I'll be honest, sometimes the 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 it's a small percentage of haters but that small percentage of haters got a real loud voice right and you can hear them sometimes over the supporters right but it comes down to knowing i got the supporters and the fact that you got a paycheck bigger than any paycheck you got in the nfl because the nfl page based on contract right they paid you we're gonna sign you to this and we pay you this regardless the check that you got was based on people watching you and coming to support you. The check itself says you got more supporters than haters. And I get it. Again, them supporters, them, them haters are loud. They loud. But every time I see Unk responding to it, like, man, they... and I'm not saying this in dissing to Unk, so I want my words to be clear. I'm not dissing Unk. I'm like, man, Unk, man, forget them jokers, man. Forget that. You doing your thing right now. 
You know what I mean? Right. You doing your thing. Let them jokers talk. Because every time somebody come in on your on your on your video and say, I don't like you, or you this or you that, you that, guess what they doing? If you know anything about the algorithm, you giving me engagement. Thank you. You just mm-hmm. help the video get seen more. So therefore, you are part of this paycheck. Thank you for helping me get this paycheck. We got to stop worrying about what everybody's saying that's negative, Coach Scott. What's your thoughts? I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, Coach J.O. made some great points as well, man. Um, awesome. yeah. You know, you know, we, 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 we like to joke back and forth with each other. That's my brother, though. Um, he made some great points, man. I mean, Coach, you, 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 you know, you know, being an athlete, a buyer yourself, being an athlete, you know, you got people that's just going to hate just because it's something to do. It's something to do. Yeah, it's but fun. what I think that Shannon has done is he sat down with a team of people. He has a great team. Um, I, I mean, just looking at the shows that he's producing, the podcast, and even when he's on first take, these guys are taking care of him, the guys and girls. I don't I don't know his, his specific crew uh, in personally or anything like that, but they're taking care of him, and they're a phenomenal crew. And, and, and I honestly feel like they're 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 putting him in a position to kind of leverage the information that's coming in. No press is bad press is is, is at this point in time is how he's looking at it. And I'm thinking that really just based on the shows, when you look at the traction and look at who he's bringing on these shows, Gilbert Arenas, I mean, you know, Gilbert Arenas is a is, is a is a guy that may be liked or may not be liked just based on the game and based on what he says, right? You you, you look at uh, T.O. versus Donna McNabb. He calls out Donna McNabb. He speaks his truth about Donna McNabb. Well, we know T.O. is not the most liked person in history uh, as it pertains to professional sports, but you know it's it it it's he it gains traction it gains it it gains views it gains followers you got mark jackson explains why he does not have a job right now i want to know i i was i was listening i watched i wanted to know why he don't have a job right uh dame dash you know not one of the most uh well respected guys in the industry uh you know from a from a from a uh uh, attitude perspective, but definitely from a, what he's done for the for the for the business standpoint, absolutely. Uh, Monique, you know, Cat Williams, not the most uh, politically friendly or 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 going with the grain type people. So I think his team is really sitting down and and really kind of being selective and being pinpointed in who they bring on and when they bring these people on and 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 really trying to catch traction and 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 kind of sway the viewership um in his dynamic and and again at this point for Co- I mean uh for for Shannon, you know, hey, no press is bad press right now. <laughs> hey, that's facts right, right there. No press That's is right. bad press. You know what I mean? They got Coach Dayo, they got the picture of Shannon when he's getting out of out of the truck with the uh oh, you know, they got him they got that, you know. Um, and you see people are saying things, you know. Now, <clears throat> I think and I always believe people have the right to say what they want to say. And when we put ourselves in the public eye, then you know, we need to brace ourselves for what people are going to say. Some of it is constructive criticism. Some of it's just hating. Some of it might be jokes, man. Like if you're a celebrity, just just wait for somebody's gonna be able to do that 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 impersonation of you. Somebody, you know, it's it's a part of it because you're 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 out there. You're in the public eye. Um, I get it, and it it could be aggravating. You know, it could bother you a, a bit. But at some point, you know, I think we got to get that tougher skin. And 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 that and that's not a diss to people either. When we got to tell them they got tough skin, because people are like, I got tough skin. You don't know what you're talking about. It, it makes you mad when somebody tells you to get tough skin. I get it. It'll make me mad sometimes too. But, you know, if it's facts, it's facts, Coach J.O. Right, but, you right. know, the internet's undefeated, man. Right. They, they, if he wasn't, if he wasn't popping, they wouldn't be talking. Hey, that, that, that's absolutely right. And another lesson that his sister taught him, right? Hey, she stated him and he, and he, he acknowledged it. He said, sometimes, you'll fall out of favor with God, with your actions and words. He's yeah. taking accountability. Mm-hmm. He's taking accountability for the way that he reacts mm-hmm. to what's coming at him. Cause he showed sure getting it now. Nah. He showed sure getting it, but he got to recognize that he's the one looking down. All right, yeah, everybody else looking up at him. Everybody he's the up. one that's looking down. Cause he's doing his thing right now. And we didn't even mention his cognac that's selling out. Selling right? out. Okay. Can't keep he, it hey, we stuff. didn't mention that. 
Right. First, did not first take that. First take views are up on the days he's on there. Come on. Undisputed. Come on. Look like it's on the way down or out. Right. Oh my goodness. Means man. wherever you go, man, you track and go. Your footsteps hey. even go behind. Hey, uh, forget the haters. Do what you gotta do. Let's move forward. Let's go to the next segment. The Golden State Warriors, after losing six straight, they've won six and two in their last in their last eight. Uh, Coach Scott, are is, are they going? Are they back? Are they going to make their way into the playoffs? What are your thoughts on Golden State? You know, like, do you think it's they're tricky. able to get into the playoffs and make a little noise this year, or are you worried that they they might not do anything? It's tricky. Um, Got to find out what's going on with Steph's ankle. Um, you know, he he wrenched his ankle pretty bad. Don't know what that's going to look like long term. Um, one of the things that has helped them out uh, in that in that six and four uh, run since the All Star break, man. Clay coming off the bench and, and embracing that role has gave them such a lift. Chris Paul coming back, give, giving them such a lift. I mean, I think I think you know they're in the ten spot right now, behind the Lakers, half a game back. I think you know if, if they can if they can put together a good run going into the playoffs i think their momentum uh gives them a, a chance to be scary but I, that's something to be seen that's something to be seen but also me personally i just gotta you know because because steph has had so many issues with those ankles uh you know i i just gotta find out and see really how that's going to to help him out uh long term well they get into the play in um that's what it looks like um if, you know they keep on the way they're going, Coach Jay, I know you got a lot to say about it, but what are your thoughts? That's who are you? Who Who are you more worried about, the Lakers or the Warriors? Mm. All right, listen, Steph not there. Of course, it's the Warriors. All right, and if the audience don't know, I'm a Steph Curry guy. It's my favorite player in the NBA. But as the long objective panelist who can be objective about their favorite players, I'm going to be objective that? about Stephen. Curry, you know, and this the is an honest panel, right? We supposed to tell the uh, truth every time okay. we say something to the best of our ability, right? This, Come on, this, this listen. Guy. Yeah, you this are guy. what your record says you are. <laughs> it's that simple. All right, the NBA has helped these players and teams out. They gave you two extra spots to have an opportunity to get into the playoffs. You're the tenth seed. You got a thirty-three and thirty record. You are what your record says you are. You're mediocre. It's that simple. Now, unless you're telling me Steph can play every minute of the game, because when he's on the court, when he's on the court, they has a they have the number four offensive rate in the NBA. The number four, 19, I mean 119.8. That's almost a 120 um offensive rate. That's awesome, awesome, awesome when he's playing. But he can't play every minute. Okay. They have a 102.1 pace when Steph is on the court. That's number four in the NBA. When he's off the court, they're dead last. They're the slowest team in the NBA. The Warriors are old. The Warriors are slow. They're not athletic, okay? Now, as I always say, defensive rebounding wins championships. They're the number two D, uh, rebounding team in the NBA. But they're not playing any defense, okay? They're not playing any defense. Last night, you got beat by a wimby list Spurs. A wimby list Spurs. Wimby didn't play. You gave up four 30-point quarters. You're not playing any defense. So how? How are you going to turn this thing around? Okay? Your point of attack of the defenders are slow. Steph Curry, he's not a very great athlete. All right? Clay, he's old. All right? Uh, Andrew Wiggins, he's struggling this year. Yeah. They can't guard the ball. You got to be able to guard the ball to be able to, um, to win in the playoffs. Right now, they're not showing it. They can win some games. And not only that. They 16 and 22 versus the West. How you gonna get out the West? How? You 16 and 22. How you gonna get out yeah. the West? You are what your record says you are. Well, sounds like they need Larry Bird, Coach Scott. <laughs> Draymond Green ain't doing the groin kicks no more. Something wrong. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and they mm -mm. need some help over there. Um, mm. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, well, you know, they 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 may struggle. You know, it it'd be Coach Scott, it'd be it'd be weird to see uh the Warriors not in the playoffs. Because for right. some years, we looked at this like, this is a dynasty. And obviously, it's coming to an end. And, you know, Father Father Time is undefeated, except in one case. 
but <laughs> primarily he's undefeated. Wonder why. And uh, I, don't shake your head. I'm just saying, you know, that that's a in, uh, a compliment, not an insult. But um, he's undefeated. But it looks like Father Time is starting to slowly dismantle the Warriors. And I thought, you know, Clay, uh, not Clay, but uh, Steph was actually holding on the longest and still, but yeah. like I say, those yeah. ankles, the ankles. Mm-hmm. Who do you think? Who who are you more worried about? The Lakers or the Warriors? Uh, I think Coach J.O. makes a great point. I mean, you are what your record says you are, and and neither one of them are, 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 are really just from a defensive standpoint, neither one of them are playing just really well. Um, I would, I would say the Lakers, I would say the Lakers, um, you know, my squad is back on the East side, um, the B side. So I, 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 I'm, I'm, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, if, if, if the Lakers got into the second round, I would be surprised, um, you know, but you know, it looks like they're trying to put some things together. It's just, it's just, they don't play defense well. Mm-hmm. They, they they try to go out and outscore everybody every night, and it's just it's just not a good look. It's it's not it's not something you can sustain. It's just yeah. not something you can sustain. Well, time will tell. But well, we gonna move to the next uh, segment. Ben Wallace, not Ben Wallace. Ben Simmons. It should have been Ben Wallace. Ben Simmons, <laughs> bro, just get out. <laughs> it's just Coach Hill, you know, like you know, like. You have, and I, from the outside looking in, okay. Now, for all of those who, oh, you guys are trying to bring some, 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 some black athletes down. Man, we're talking sports, okay. I don't care if it's a black athlete, a white athlete, a purple athlete, or a yellow athlete. We're talking sports, and we're not trying to bring any man down, but we're talking sports. <clears throat> and looking at Ben Simmons, is to me what I'm starting to get. And I, you know, this is me, what I'm seeing here. It's almost like a a, 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 a bratty attitude. Like, oh, I don't feel like playing today. You are in a position in a league making money that I don't know the percentage or number of people who would love to be in your. I remember when my, when my dad used to come home from work, he used to work in construction, <clears throat> right? He worked construction. And I remember him coming home from work. And he was covered in that brick dust because you had to saw those bricks in half and that white dust. Wow. His hair was white. We black. I got black hair. His hair was white. His skin was white. All of his clothing was white. His boots were white. He left a black man, came home a white man. And when he sat down, he said, Whew. he just, he took a breath and he just looked at me. And I knew he was tired. He is laboring, right? All of that dust from the bricks, the white bricks, just, he was covered in dust. And the only thing that wasn't white was his eyeballs because, you know, when you lift up your eyes, you, that was it. You know, the, uh, other, the brown portion of his eye. You know, that was it. He was covered in dust. And when I look at athletes today, when I look at athletes today, in the position you're in, you're making hundreds of millions or 50 million. Even if you make one million to mm. dribble a ball, to shoot a ball, to play basketball, and, I, and don't get me wrong, now, Coach Dale, sports is work. You got to work your butt off. I understand, but you're not outside in the sun lifting heavy bricks, laboring. You're not laboring. You're not slaving on jobs that you got to be there. You have to work ten hours and twelve hours and fifteen hours just to barely make pay the bills to feed your children. And I think we forget that as people sometimes that you're blessed to be in the position that you're in. What's going on with Ben Simmons? Not just Ben Simmons, but any athlete that to me that has this mindset, Coach Dale. Like, how do we deal with it? How do you, what's going on? Hey, I'll tell you. That was this prophet, this great, great prophet that walked the earth and he got this famous quote. Those that show mercy shall obtain mercy. Okay. Seems like Ben Simmons not getting no mercy on his panel right now, right? 2016, 2017, he had a fractured foot before he even came into the NBA. Missed the entire season. Okay, 2020, left knee surgery. 2021, back surgery. Okay, back surgery. We know about those backs, right? 2022, 
23 season and this season, he have nerve impingement. Coach Scott, you've been a professional athlete. A buyer, you had some injuries. We all know. What can you do? You have surgery after surgery after surgery. Your back gone. What we expect Ben Simmons to do? So has what do been, we expect him to has do? He, has he been injured 82 games a year? <laughs> every like I, what's I going on? Like saying, what's what's what, really going on? Every team no, you go like, come I, on now. What do Let's we expect them to do when he's on the court? Play basketball. He produces. Play he, basketball. He produces. Play he's a three-time All-Star, All-NBA player. Okay, come on, two-time All-Defense first team. Let's a. Hey, come on. Wait, let me ask you a question. Those accolades you just ran off. When did they come? They came in twenty uh, nineteen twenty and twenty twenty one. All defense, right? Two time All Defense, back to back years. What happened after that? He's got injured. In Philly too. Got in Brooklyn. Say it again. In Brooklyn, he had he had back surgery in 2021. Was that the reason when he got to Brooklyn he was not initially playing? Right. He he was suffering from back issues. Yes. No. He what, held what back. happened? Come on. What happened? Coach Scott. What happened? Let me see if T I'm Tell us what happened. <laughs> no, 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 no. You talking about when he got yeah. traded, he was suffering from back issues when he was with Philly. With Philly? Yes. He, Brooklyn. No, no, no. I'm saying Getting traded from Philly to Brooklyn, he was still suffering back issues. Okay. Coach Scott, where you? Listen, my father was a block mason as well. And 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 I, I know all too well about those those days where 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 a man goes out one color and he comes back, hair, eyeballs, clothes, and everything else comes back another color. I I, I know all too well. I've been in the Florida Sun. You know, mud, mud, mud boards, and 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 all that other good stuff. I don't on work sites in the summer with sun, my father. Hey, leave so the I, sun I, down when you leave, and sun down when you come home. Man, I I understand what what putting all that you have into something to give someone else a result. I understand what that looks like. So I'm gonna read a I'm gonna read something um, from the Philadelphia uh, Patriot News. Ben Simmons' career is wasting away, and no one cares hmm. there is nothing sad anymore about the decline of ben simmons career sadness requires sympathy it requires a feeling however slight of affection and understanding for a person dealing with hardships and difficulty circumstances whatever affection or understanding anyone outside of simmons family and his most devoted accomplice accountants have but for him these days that has long since dried up six seasons two teams and he's only been able to play three he's creating a narrative for himself and i think he's okay with it and that's what's being portrayed about ben simmons and this is why nobody is caring anymore about Ben Simmons' career. And I understand all too well about that prophet saying about mercy. But how many times do you, you, you really watch a person actually just rest on their talent? Is he, is he really, really trying to give his competitive greatness? Is he really trying to show that he's one of the best defensive players in the game? Because in Philly, let me tell you, They've seen Charles Barkley. They've seen Wilt Chamberlain. They've seen AI be battered, bruised. They've seen Moses Malone. They've seen Joel Embiid. They've seen these players battered and bruised and still going out and performing. They've seen it. So when you say you want us to be sympathetic or empathetic or give mercy, or clemency to what we're seeing in the decline of Ben Simmons is two things when I was growing up, you should never hear in the same sentence. Big and fragile. Them two things you should never hear. So this guy, this guy is big and fragile. Yeah. I mean, so and, and again, we're specifically talking about sports, right? Me personally, I I, I will be honest with you. Me personally, and I think I, I've heard I've talk to a lot of other athletes as well. When, when, when it comes down to when you're, you're signing major contracts, big contracts, you're getting the money, 
And then, what, matter of fact, matter of fact, yet, let me ask you this, Coach. I'm going to just turn the whole truck around right here. Please. Guaranteed money, too, now. Guaranteed. The mercy Guaranteed that you said money. Ben Simmons should have. Whenever LeBron James got injured, did you show him that same mercy? When did he get injured? Whenever he got injured. Had, had LeBron James had a surgery? I've never known LeBron James have a surgery. Did you show him the same mercy when he got injured? He didn't get. He didn't have a surgery. You don't have yeah, to have a wrong. surgery to get when you get injured. Everybody don't have surgeries when they get injured. But the, he literally had surgeries. Yeah, back surgery. Okay, but did you show LeBron James the same mercy you're talking about? He didn't deserve that type of mercy. <laughs> he that, listen. Ho 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 ho. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. <laughs> yeah, listen. There are certain things called soft tissue injuries. LeBron James suffered soft tissue injuries. That's what happens. We know okay. that soft tissue injuries could be more vital to a career of an athlete than any other uh, uh, any other he injury. He literally right? had a broken foot. Okay, he literally had back surgery. Like you got some cats who can't pick up a pin off the floor if they pull a muscle in their back. He had back surgery. So should he should he retire? No. No, not at all. Okay. Now, can we talk about what he does when he's on the court? Let's can go. we talk about yes. that? Yeah, definitely. I can think we... I think he's an awesome player. Don't get me wrong. Okay, first four years, right? 16, 8, and 8 player, shooting 56% from the field. Again, he finished number two in defensive player of the year voting. Arguably the best defender in the NBA. And you want him to uh, shut down Luka? You want him to shut down LeBron? You want him to shut down Trey Young with a bad back? How is he going to do that? How? How can he do it? That's all I'm asking. Should he retire? No. no. How is he going to do it with a bad back? Hey, where there's a will, there's a way. He can recover. It is what it is. He can recover. That's where there's a will, that's a way. He all I all I want to say, Coach J.O., when LeBron James has an injury, I want you to talk about the great prophet who talked about showing some mercy. You better show LeBron James that same mercy you all here talking about right now. Let's move to the next segment. <laughs> all right, listen. Um, it sounds like some trouble is going on at home. All right. That's a little bit of trouble going on at home. Stephen A. Smith and Pat McAfee, a little something brewing, Coach Scott. And I think I might have an idea what it is, mainly because Stephen A. He said it. <laughs> it's not a secret, really. Uh, what's going on with, 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 with the, the top dog at ESPN, Coach Scott? Him and Pat McAfee. Well, Is he scared Pat Mc McAfee coming for him or what? Like, what's going on? Well, I, I think it's all surrounded about money, um, definitely. Right. You know, uh, I don't think Pat McAfee is coming for him. You know, he need to be coming for Pat McAfee because Matt, Pat McAfee right now got the bag. He got he's got a bigger bag than Stephen A. And I think that that's the issue. You know, it's a couple of things about this that that kind of stick out like a sore thumb. A couple of things, right? First, who leaked the call? It was supposed to be a private call. This was supposed to be two men trying to iron out some things, and this is supposed to be a private call, and the call got leaked. Who leaked the call? Um, Stephen A. Apparently. Uh, made some statements about Pat McAfee, not saying that he was racist, not saying that, you know, he felt like he was, he was, you know, overstepping or anything like that. But he did say he felt like Pat McAfee had privilege and he felt like he was utilizing his privilege. Who do you know goes to work with muscle shirts on and, and t-shirts on and, and doesn't dress as, as, as Stephen A would dress and doesn't dress like other analysts dress and things of that nature. So, you know, I, I I feel like, you know, when you look at apples to apples based off of both of the shows and, and both of the hosts, I like both of shows, but I can say I don't go to work like that. You don't go to work like that. So, you know, it, 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 you know, he made a statement and he, and he stood down on that statement. But I also can say, hey, Stephen, they might have a point because I don't ever recall the time in my professional career outside of football where you could be called an Emma Effer and you keep your job. Yeah. What say yeah. you? <laughs> yeah. Coach Dale, I, I will say this. Now let's be let's be fair. If if you and this it ain't nothing to do with Pat McAfee. It got whoever at ESPN. Right. Know, black, white, blue, purple. Let's just be honest. It doesn't matter. 
Stephen A has been the top dog for a lot of years. Stephen A has brought you the numbers for a lot of years. Now, mind you, not I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. You know, we talked about Stephen A last show and how you need to, you know, watch what he's saying. No, he needs to show a little more. So, you know, we're just gonna be honest on both sides. If we can, if we can honestly say Stephen when Stephen A messes up, let's honestly say when you know he probably have a point as well. Absolutely. If he's been the top dog for a lot of years, no matter how he got there, Coach J.O., shouldn't ESPN have treated him as he was as the top dog since he's bringing you the numbers? Of course they should. And, and like Coach Scott said, this is the problem. Now, let's be clear. McAfee and Stephen A. Smith both came out publicly, stated that there's nothing, there's no beef between the two. Both can go on each other's show. Uh, they looking forward to doing work with each other, their colleagues, so on and so forth, right? Now, but there was an altercation, right? Right? They handled it like men, apparently, right? But this is a money issue. This is a ego uh, trip. This is an ego struggle right now, all right? Now, let's just, let's just keep it real. This is the same thing with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. As long as you the top paid person on that panel, you're the big dog, all right? You're the big dog. McAfee came on Stephen A. Smith panel, all right? Stephen A. Smith, in his mind, he's the big dog, not only in, uh, on first take, but in ESPN in general. But McAfee makes more money than Stephen A. Smith. So who is really the big dog? Okay? Who's really the big dog? Right. Stephen A. Smith did an interview with Clay Travis last December, and he was asked a question about, do he feel that he should be the number one paid analyst in ESPN? I saw he that. said, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm not stuttering. Hell mm -hmm. yes. That's absolutely true. I've mastered my own business in the world of sports television. I've been number one for 12 years. April 1st will mark 12 consecutive years I've been number one. Not only have I been number one every year, I've been number one every week and every month of every year for the last 12 years. You don't get to say that about too many people. Right. Why isn't he the highest paid analyst? All right, Joe Buck came in, got paid more than him. Troy Aikman came in, got paid more than him. Yeah. He welcomed them in. Yeah. He welcomed them in. He welcomed McAfee in. But McAfee looking at Stephen A like, dude, I make more money than you. How you going? Who are you? Mm. Yeah, that's that's a, to me. And what, what what goes on, Coach Scott, with this is that I feel like ESPN is responsible for the tears and the relationships between these men because, yeah, this guy has a valid point that he has been carrying us for a number of years, but I'm going to pay these guys more. And so naturally, you're going to be like, wait a minute, hold on. Wait, when? When, when am I going to get my work? And that's going to naturally at some point cause some friction between you and your co-workers. Right. I mean, because like, eh, no, you give him, okay, 12 million a year, but you, you got like an $85 million contract over here, Troy Aikman. And, you know, all these type of things, like what's going on with that, you know? And I think, I think ESPN knows what they're doing. And it's not the first shady thing that we've seen or heard about ESPN. It, it happens. It happens. You know, we it's issues with, with all type of Brian Clark live on TV. He just went ahead and put it out there. You know, I'm tired of this crap. You know, I'm tired of this. We seen issues like that with with, with Ray Lewis. You know, it, these things have happened over time. Let's just be honest. Unfiltered. ESPN's a suspect network. They crappy. You know, they do low down and, and dirty things and they treat people certain ways, Coach Scott. And I think, and I actually, let's just be honest, this, this, this crap's intention. Am Absolutely. I wrong? Am I, am I, am I off by that? No, you're, you're not off at all. I mean, I think, I think that you have to, you have to butter the bread where it needs to be buttered at. And, and, and in this respect, Stephen A needs to get what he's owed. He's, he needs to get what he's deserved right. and, you know, be put in the, in the proper place as it pertains to that show and any other any other network that deals with ESPN from a, 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 a analyst position to where Stephen A is is actually utilizing his skill set to bring other individuals to to actually bring their expertise to the show, 
they need to pay him for it. I mean, the guy is, he's done it. He's proven to do it. He has the juice. He has it. I mean, he has it. I mean, yeah. I, 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 perfectly, I personally, I think he says, you know, a couple of controversial things. And I think that's just to get the blood going. But at the same time, he doesn't back down off of what he's saying. He stands on what he's saying. But as it pertains to the information, he's one of the best to ever do. Do it and it's not just last year it's not just the year before that it's been consistently like coach jo said for the last 12 years yeah yeah well i i i'll, I'll disagree with just a piece of what you said i do think he needs to back down on some of the stuff he's saying you know i get what he's doing but yeah sometimes you need to back down of what you say hey, oh, but, yeah, that I mean, is... but he don't back down no he's I'm not saying, he doesn't he, he doesn't he's not he should back. but he doesn't yeah right yeah. Right, especially when you're talking about calling people, you know, fat, body yeah, shaming fat, over hamburgers yeah, and, you know, yeah, stuff like that. Hey, you should and back that, down. That's why he's getting wore out. Yeah, they wearing, <laughs> they wearing them out. And that's why he's getting wore out. Exactly. Last segment, and we're about to get up out of here. Listen, man, this is the last segment. We're going to make sure we, uh, uh, we, we want to reach out and read some comments. So we want to keep the viewers involved as much as possible. So y'all dropping comments, man. We're going to grab comments that we see. You know what I mean? And and we want to appreciate y'all for supporting the show. There's a couple of comments that we want to go over. Coach Scott, I'm going to let you read yours first. I'm going to save mine for last. And Coach Jay, I'm going to let you go. And just you know, read your comment, you know, respond to the viewer. Don't be too harsh on the viewers now. We got we want them to watch. <laughs> Don't no, be too it, it, harsh. Look, y'all got on me. Y'all, you Michael Jordan fans, look, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not dealing with y'all this week. I uh I appreciate the feedback. I appreciate the comments. Understand if I oh. never responded. You know, I, I, I kind of look at some of that stuff and uh, I laugh. It's it, a couple of them are funny. A couple of them are personal. Let's keep it. Let's keep it. Uh, let's keep it classy. I'm a classy guy. I ain't gonna come at you. Please don't come at me. So but listen, if you do listen, come hey, at hey, me, hey, listen, Coach Scott. Let me let me take up Coach Scott real quick. Let me take up Coach Scott. Whoever said my my, my guy looked like Ben Wallace? Y'all spot on. <laughs> I looked at the picture. He looked just like Ben Wallace. <laughs> You were spot on with that one. Go ahead, Coach Scott. Yeah, that was funny. That was funny. I appreciate that. Funny. I appreciate that comment. <laughs> um, but this comment though, I did uh I did uh select out of the group. Um it is at T H T A. So I'm sorry about that. T A H G E E A N D R E W seven nine four five. Um I would have read the actual naming, but it's it's not like a name, it's That's a, a long name. It's a, uh, yeah, it's, it's a couple of things put together, but it said carry carry Scotty carried the same load rebounds scoring assists and defense. Um, thank you for being very open and subjective. Obviously, you've watched basketball. Obviously, you've followed the Chicago Bulls for a number of years. You understand the game. You understand how the game is played. You, I understand you're not saying that Scottie Pippen is Michael Jordan. I understand that. And I really appreciate you understanding that I wasn't saying that as well. Hey, thank you so much for the comments. Continue to watch us, push us, promote us. We thank you for all your support. Coach J.O., he put a lot of emphasis on them eyes. I understand that, right? <laughs> it helped him prove his point. He put emphasis on the eyes, Coach J.O., but go ahead. You got it. <laughs> this is uh, Machek-1, M-I-C-H-E-K. If I pronounce your, man, uh, your name wrong, uh, forgive me. Machek-1. MJ Kobe, two best defensive guards ever. I see people say, well, MJ got outscored or... I think he's trying to say scored on, but got outscored by Penny, Wilkins, which are uh, small forwards and point and point guards. You can cover them all the time. Shoot guards do not supposed to guard them all the time. That's the point that they made. Hey, I do agree with the point that you made about uh, MJ and um, Kobe being the best two defensive guards. Everything else, uh, I see that you tried to make some points that you know the shooting guard doesn't guard the small forwards and the point guards. But I do agree, uh, Kobe and MJ, the two best defensive guards, they guarded one through three, sometimes four, and they will lock up any of those cats, any of those best perimeter players, simple as that. Appreciate you. All right, well, let me get this last comment out. 
And we just finished talking about Shannon Sharp not responding to the haters. So I'm going to read this comment, but it's not a response to anybody that's hating. It's a response to make sure a narrative is not created, not about the GOAT debate. All right. So Rodriguez Stevenson 6197 says, sound like some clowns attacking the ideals of young black men. Why y'all attacking black men, but where it is, where is the energy to help the black community? So I would just like to say, Mr. Rodriguez, <clears throat> 6179, that all three of these men up here do tons of work in the black community. If you mm. want to talk about helping the young kids mm. uh, in, 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 in the sports arena, that's being Preach. done. If you want to talk about feeding the homeless, that's being done. If you want to talk about Preach. helping clothe the naked, that's being done by these men up here. So what we want to keep the narrative is, and it's not to respond as a revenge, but I want to address you. No, I just want the narrative narrative to be correct. We're not here to, to talk about black, white, Hispanic, yellow, purple, green. We're here to talk about sports. And if it's in the public eye of sports, that's what we want to cover. Hopefully you continue to watch. Hopefully you subscribe and hit the like bells, but it's not about tearing down. It's strictly about sports because you would never hear any of us talk about someone's a bad father, a bad son, a bad person. They're not good to their community because that those are personal attacks. You're not going to hear us make any personal attacks. And when we talk about uplifting the community, also, as I say, we do that. We also, if you listen to the shows, there are several people. All right. Let's say people, because, again, we don't we don't want to make this black, white, yellow, purple, blue thing. There are several people we talk about. In sports that we say, hey, they're doing great. Hey, these guys are not doing so great. But that's what analyzing the sports is all about. It's just about enjoying the sport and giving your commentary and what you like or don't like about what you're seeing in today's game. But with that being said, we are going to get out of here. Make sure you guys subscribe. Make sure you hit the like button. Follow us on all social media. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube, obviously. We're on TikTok, Spotify. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you follow us with that. And we are out. Peace. Welcome to The Goat Debate, the premier online sports debate show where engaging discussions and thrilling debates unfold as we determine who is the greatest of all time in every sport. I am your host, Abaya Israel, joined by my two co-hosts, Coach Scott and Coach J.O. Tune into our YouTube and Facebook channels to catch our reactions and coverage of the biggest games and the latest news. Don't miss out on your chance to participate in the action. Join us every Tuesday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for a The Goat Debate, where you, the viewer, can call in and share your thoughts on who deserves the title of the GOAT. Be sure to mark your calendars. Every Monday, we upload 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, and we go live every Tuesday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Be sure to subscribe, call in, and participate. Come and be a part of the conversation.